What is going on, Sixers fans? Welcome back to the Sixers Digest YouTube channel. My name is Sean Bernard, as usual, and the James Harden saga continues to get crazier and crazier as we have a new update that was first reported by Keith Pompey of a strange desire of James Harden for where he could possibly want to play next year and shedding some light on that. So before I get fully into it, make sure to hit that bell, subscribe to the channel, get notifications for all the content we're going to have coming out. We're going to be with you from start to finish this season. And drop a comment. Let me let me know your thoughts on, on the whole James Harden saga, what you're thinking from here with the outlook can. But let's dive fully into it. And the first report, the newest chapter in the James Harden saga, was reported by Keith Pompey of the Philadelphia Inquirer last night with a quote from Harden saying, quote, Every time I come here, the love is just like, it's crazy. You know what I mean? So I feel like they deserve to actually see me play here. L the love is always crazy here. He's, of course, referring to China in this situation. We know that he is on his tour of China right now. That is where the, the quote from Daryl Moore calling him a liar has come out from. There is a ton of history between China and the NBA and China and James Harden as a whole, as well as Daryl Moore on the negative side of things, which many have speculated is a reason for the quote of him calling him a liar, which I know we've seen a thousand times, but I will play again right here. Murray is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Let me say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Again. So that legendary, let me say it again, quote, did occur at a camp in China where he is for his Adidas press release, a camp with a bunch of children there. James Harden also looks like he is having his t the time of his life in China in general. He was on a live stream with a, a couple celebrities from China, sold 10,000 bottles of wine in just five seconds at the kickoff of it, as well as has been seen riding dirt bikes around or riding mopeds around or riding through stadiums, just having the time of his life. So it does seem like he genuinely enjoys it over there. You can see the fandom from the, the Chinese fan base over there. They're just my mobbing him everywhere he goes so that has to be a nice feeling for James Harden at this point in time especially in a a point in his career when he has to feel the most unwanted that he never has but that does bring up the question of how serious could he possibly be about playing China now China is not the worst quality of basketball in the world they're up there with some of the most respected leaves of course below the NBA but when you do, do look around that China has put forth more steps in, in recent years that we you see a lot of NBA guys who can't quite find success. Stefan Marbury is probably the most notable that has had success over there. But there are guys that hang on at the end of their career, go play. We have Dwight Howard playing in Taiwan lately. Dwight Howard also dropped a little recruitment video at James Harden as he's looking for a team, telling him to come here. So I do love that out of Dwight. He's a guy that I have fond memories on from his time with the Sixers, much more for his personality than his on-court play. But for James Harden, this is not a stage in his career where he should be wanting to go to China, as he indicates in this record. This is still a time where he can contribute to winning basketball in a positive way. And I know that we did not see it with the Sixers at the end of the season. I know the frustrations and the fallout that is all coming from it. But this is still a guy that scored 40 points in two separate playoff games. Still a guy that led the NBA in assists last year. Still a guy that played at an all-NBA level for most of the season, even as he approaches 34 and is nearing the end of his career. So I still do think this is purely a leverage play. And this brings in the question of what exactly will James Harden do? We know the situation. We know his back's against the wall. We know he did not get the money that he wanted. He opted into the contract, uh, the player option that he had with the request to be traded, and now has made it quite clear that he has zero intention of playing for the Sixers or any other organization that Daryl Moore could possibly have his hands in. So now he has to create some leverage out of somewhere. He lost that ability when he did opt into the contract, when he stepped out of free agency, because in free agency, he could have chosen to sign wherever he wanted. Now, there was not a ton of money floating around. The market of him for him was clearly dry. This is why we saw him whispering those Houston rumors all year, why we saw things ramp up and, and him trying to strike up a market for himself. This happens in the NBA bidding words, where a lot of times teams will be like, okay, well, go show us what you're worth. Find a team that will pay you something and we'll pay you that. The Sixers did something very similar with Paul Reed. I know that's a different situation because he was legitimately a restricted free agent, so the Sixers matched a contract. So it was a more clean-cut version of it and a more direct start and finish to the process but there is a similar thing done with unrestricted free agents in front offices when there is a good rapport where it's like you find out your market and we will pay you that i i think that's what harden was trying to do to just show that he had some sort of backing but there really is not the case right now and for the opt-in specifically James Harden has set his sights on Clippers. That's been the Los Angeles Clippers. That's been the team mentioned the most from the start, something that he's been very much on record of wanting to go to. Reports coming from various places in that regard. He could only have gotten to the Clippers either by signing a veteran's minimum for around $2 million, which is well below the price point that Harden's looking for, 
or he could be opted in and traded. And it does make sense from the Sixers' perspective because then they could get something back for Harden rather than just letting him walk for free. And for Harden, he gets a guaranteed $35 million, assuming that he at least reaches the terms of his deals and plays some sort of basketball this year, which at this point in time is up in the air. I did want to circle back to this report that I've brought up on this channel a couple times, and this is the holdout rules, and this is why James Harden really does not have much leverage in this situation. This was written by Zach Lowe here, and the part that I'm paying closer attention to now is this specific wording at the end. So what this report says is uh, a separate clause in the CBA, which existed in prior versions of the agreement, holds that any player who withholds playing services for more than 30 days after the start of the last season uh, covered by his contract could be deemed to have violated his contract and prohibited from entering free agency or signing with, quote, any other professional basketball team unless and until the team with which the player has last played expressly agrees otherwise. Now, why I think that's interesting is the phrasing of any professional basketball team. Does that apply to the Chinese leagues? I am not a thousand percent certain. This is definitely not something they expected to come up with the CBA. This is going to take some uh, lawyers looking at it and digging deep into it if this is a move Harden wants to make. But the bottom line is Harden is going to continue finding new ways to create leverage. This guy is the Michael Jordan of forcing himself out of teams. He for real has a bag that we have not seen when it comes to making teams unhappy and creating a window for itself. We've seen the the classic, the hits. We've seen him show up overweight. We've seen him not try on the court. We've seen him have his party tour where he's out every night, not showing up with teams. Now we're seeing him call the general manager a liar directly to as many cameras as can be seen. We see the media leaks. And now we're seeing the potential for him to want to play in China. And I also will say there is a part of me that could think it could be very fun to watch James Harden play in China. That we know that he is limited at times in the NBA, but at this point he is a player where he catches fire once in a while. That sometimes he has these moments where it's very clear he can still be that guy. They're just not there on a regular basis. If he's playing against a significantly depleted talent level in China, he absolutely can tear that up. And he's going to be a guy that will have the permanent green light, will be able to shoot as much as he wants. And he honestly could create himself as far as a brand image in person. He could be an absolute hero to that country. So I do somewhat see the appeal if he is feeling as unwanted as it seems by the Sixers and by the rest of the NBA. For the most part, I think there's something going to be used to float above Daryl Morey's head. There is the bad blood between China and Daryl Morey dating back several years now. Uh, Daryl Morey tweeting a free Hong Kong several years ago, and that's not sitting well with China, who there's obviously a ton of bad blood politically there. And the NBA as a whole has a lot of business that they do with China, uh, both back and forth. So this did not, this created some very bad wavelengths and, and press to Daryl Morey. This was back when he was still with the Rockets. So I do think that there is some correlation to James Harden deciding to stir a lot of this pot up in China and specifically with China. So who knows what's going to happen from here, how legitimate he is. I, I, Like I said, I have no idea how deep James Harden's trade request bag is. I expect the unexpected at this point. I think it can only get worse. I think he's going to make more surprises and more shocking switch-ups. I think at some point when he comes back, we're going to get a deeper dive into his comments of why did he call Daryl Moyer a liar. He's going to be able to open up on his opinions on that. And he also has the Sixers in a bit of a corner because if he's calling Moyer a liar for the handshake agreement that – Maury saying, you opt out of your player option last year and I'll repay you on the back end. That's illegal according to the CBA. So the Sixers can't acknowledge that that ever happened if that was the case. So the Harden has every ability to control the narrative. And the Sixers are also coming off an offseason last year in which they were already hit with a tampering penalty, that they were already stripped two second round picks. If the NBA goes to investigate again and find some, some bad blood or bad bad choices, dirty business, whatever you want to call it, it's not going to be good for the franchise. And there's not that much in the cupboard to be taken. There's not that many more picks that the NBA could possibly strip. So the Sixers are not in a good place if the investigation does come. So that is in James Harden realm of possibility as far as his burn the bridges tour and making sure that he makes life as hard as possible for the Sixers. We'll see what happens for here. From now, he's staying in China for at least a little bit longer, continue his press tour with Adidas. Daryl Morey will continue to create a plan who's apparently unwavered by all these comments. And hopefully we will at least have some sort of compatible uh, Sixers roster once the basketball season does roll around. Appreciate all you guys for tuning in. Like I said, make sure to drop a like, a subscribe on the channel. Drop a comment. Let me know your final prediction for the James Harden saga. And I will talk with you next time here on Sixers Digest. Peace.